Hi YouTube, welcome to Kitchen Table Reviews. I'm going to take you on a rundown top bottom of my home network. So I use Ubiquiti Unify equipment for my switches and my gateway, but then I use a Synology NAS which looks after my data storage and backups, um, a couple of VMs, those sort of things. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. So just before we start, if you do like the video and you do like the content, please hit the subscribe and the like button. Leave any comments or feedback that you'd like me to go over um, or explain in future videos. Any feedback is really welcome. So I have the Unified Dream Machine Pro as my gateway. Um, I used to have the three port USG, but recently upgraded it and I have another video on the review. Um, I still think it's a little bit buggy, but it's getting there. Um, hopefully the next software update will sort some of the issues, but actually processing power and managing the network, it does a really good job. The new USW 24 port PoE switch, again, um, I like the fact that it's got the little touch screen on the front, it's quite helpful for diagnosing issues. And then I have a eight port switch which sits underneath my TV, so that has my Apple TV, the TV itself, um, connected to it. So where I can, I try and use cable connections. I'm quite fortunate that I live in a fairly new build apartment which has cat 5e cabling from the utility cupboard to the two bedrooms and the living room where the tv is so i've been able to utilize those hardwire connections especially for running access points the access points themselves are the unify um, ac nano hds um, completely overkill for a small home apartment um, but they do a fantastic job and they're nice and small so they're about the same size as a UAPAC light um, but obviously have 4x4 Mumimo so um, they can deal with a lot of clients again I probably only have about 25 Wi-Fi uh, devices connected so it is overkill but a really nice piece of kit so I'm going to jump into a overview of the network so I'm going to go into the Unify uh, portal and take you through the topology and just before I start showing you other parts of the network so for example the network cab um, in the utility cupboard at least you understand where the equipment is within the floor plan of the flat. So I've just gone over to the local IP address for the UDM Pro and I'm using my Ubiquiti online credentials to sign in. It will ask for two-factor authentication, which I have set up with Google um, or just the app on my phone. So just logging in, let's go over to the network. I'm currently experimenting with Unify Protect and we'll do a review on that later. Now it shows the first bug. Um, I clearly do have an internet connection, but uh, it's, a, it's a known bug within the UDM Pro. Coming down to maps um, and the topology view of my network, you can see all the devices that I've got connected. Um, a little bug that has been logged as well is that some devices connect straight to the, or show that they're connected to the UDM Pro even though they're not. Um, so all my connection goes through the rack switch, then bedroom AP, and if I hover on a device, it will show the route back through the network. I've got the TV cupboard switch, uh, which has my TV and my Bowers and Wilkinson formation audio as an example, and then the living room access point, which picks up the majority of the devices. If we zoom out, that's the sort of network tree, um, but let's switch over to the floor plan view. I have a two bedroom, two bathroom flat. Um, with quite a large utility cupboard uh, which is where the majority of the network is based. So let's switch over to the 5 gigahertz frequency because that is a little bit faster than the 2.4 and if we zoom in I've got the UDM Pro and the USW switch located in the utility cupboard and we'll jump into a quick video where I take you through the network cab. Those devices are then hardwired to the access point, which is a HD Nano in the bedroom. And then in the second bedroom, I still have a good Wi-Fi connection. It's just not as fast, but I've got two network points, which I have 
um, my computer hardwired in, that's where I edit my videos at a desk. And then in the kitchen, there is obviously the TV rack, oh, TV switch, and the final AP. Looking inside of the utility cupboard, I have a 600mm deep 12U rack. This doesn't stick out too far, it's sort of a normal worktop depth or a shelf depth. Um, I have a glass door on the front of this which keeps it all secure, which I normally have locked, but it's a normal utility cupboard. I have my tools, I have loads of storage in here, um, and it's just where the ISP goes into. There is obviously the hardwire connections that go out to the other devices within the apartment. So if we look at the rack itself, uh, I have a Synology NAS in the top left hand corner, so if we start at the top and work our way down, uh, I'll take you through what's all inside. The NAS that I have is a DS918+, Plus. it's a 4 bay NAS from Synology that is expandable to 9 bays. I currently only use three of the four bays. Um, each bay is populated with a four terabyte Western Digital Drive. So that's 12 terabytes in total, but I've used the Synology Hybrid RAID or SHR, um, and this after I've created the volume gives me seven terabytes of storage. The reason for using SHR is for data redundancy. I'd need to lose two drives before I lost any of my data. That's because if a single drive fails, I simply just put in a new drive and Disk Station is able to rebuild that drive to recover the array. This takes a bit of time, but it does give you some peace of mind if any of your hardware was to fail, you still have all your data. For critical personal data, I use Hyper Backup, which is an application that you can download within the Synology um, App Store, um, and this enables you to backup to a cloud-based service. In particular, I use Synology C2 because it is very aggressively priced. Um, 100 gigabytes of cloud storage costs me €9.99 Euros a year. Um, 300 gigabytes would cost you €24.99. Euros cents. Um, and at these levels, I, I, I don't think you can go, or these prices, you can't go wrong with that. Um, I personally don't have more than 100 gigabytes of data, which is um, critical. So say, for example, someone stole the NAS or the house burnt down. Um, this is data that I cannot afford to lose. Um, and from a security point of view, Synology has really hit the nail on the head, in my opinion, because it's all encrypted locally on the drive before it's uploaded to the cloud. So if the cloud was compromised or the operators, um, you don't just have to use Synology C2, there are other options you can use. They, uh, Anyone who had access to the backup file or folder wouldn't be able to do much with it because they wouldn't have the encryption keys or the passwords to be able to access the data. So the Synology NAS is at the center of my home network and I won't talk about it anymore because there are hundreds of things you can do with them. Um, I have virtual machines running on the NAS. Um, I've got Synology Drive which basically is a personal Dropbox-like system which enables me to sync files automatically across all my computers um, but I'll cover all of that in future videos. You'll see on the right hand side I've got a space, um, I'm looking at toying with two XCPNG servers for home virtualization, um, but I will look at that in the future, um, They each one of those servers has a dual LAN connection, which is what those four Ethernet cables are, uh, clip tied in for future use. On the shelf below, I've got three devices. Uh, on the left, the blue device is a sensor push gateway. This is just how I monitor temperatures inside of the rack, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, there's a little puck that picks up temperatures and reports that to my mobile phone. A Philips Hue bridge, which is fairly straightforward, and then I have a ISP home modem, which is what provides my internet connection. My ISP is Hyperoptic. 
Under that I have the main brains of the network itself. I have the Unify Dream Machine Pro and the USW 24PoE switch underneath that as well. It's not the Pro version of the switch so it doesn't have the SFP Plus port, it's only got the 1 gigabit SFP but for my needs at home that's more than enough. And the two little screens are a great addition, uh, currently set on the throughput setting, but it's really helpful when you're trying to diagnose issues with your network and seeing what ports have got what traffic going through it. As for cable management, I've still got quite a lot of work to get this to where I'll be happy with it, but for the time being this will do. Yellow is to div or ports, network ports around the apartment. The dark blue are devices inside of the network cab itself. The green coloured patch lead is my WAN connection and then in the future for my two servers I've got the light blue and the white patch leads which are the RJ45 terminals that you can see at the top which aren't connected to anything. What I do feel is important is all the ports in my patch panel are labelled so I do know what everything is. This is a CAT6 patch panel, but most of the structured cabling within my apartment is CAT5e, um, but I bought what was available at the time and it works absolutely fine, um, and it's just very simple cable management in between the switch and the patch panel. Finally, at the bottom of the rack, I have an APC Smart UPS 750. This provides 500 watts of power to the rack, which is more than sufficient for what I need, and in my case lasts about an hour and a half if I go on to battery. The UPS has a network management card in, and I've set up a SMTP server, basically a email server, so that the UPS is able to send emails to me when it goes on to power, uh, when the battery's getting low, or when the power is reconnected. It's really interesting to see when this kicks in. Uh, I wasn't quite expecting it to work as much as it does, but I probably, once every few months, I have a power cut and it does kick in. The Synology NAS takes advantage of the network card because it's able to monitor what state the UPS is in and if it goes on to battery power it monitors the battery level and if the battery level does get to a critical level it does a soft shutdown or a safe shutdown um, basically reducing the chance of any data corruption within the Synology NAS. It's just a bit of peace of mind but totally not required in a normal home rack um, but does give you that little bit of peace of mind if you are hosting or storing your own data at home. Just on a side note, if you are running a PoE switch as well, this will make sure that any of your CCTV cameras that are connected to the PoE switch remain on and continue to record while there is a power failure. So that was the network cabinet, it is the heart of the network, but as I said I do use um, APs in for example the bedroom, um, living room and I do have a little A port switch under the TV. So if we jump to the TV I'll take you through what I've got plugged into the A port switch. So this is my TV, as well as smart home tech I also love my hi-fi and audio so I've got some Bows & Wilkin 705S2 speakers. Um, so everything that's related to audio visual and hi-fi is on the left hand side of the cupboard and then on the right hand side of the cupboard I've got a APC Backups 500 UPS. Above that I've got a Unify 150 watt 8 port switch. I only use one of the ports for PoE so it's a bit of a waste using the switch but I had it available so that's what got used. The PoE output goes to the Unify um, Nano HD access point but otherwise all of the other equipment where I can, where it has the option to use a wired connection, so the Formation Audio from Bowers and Wilkinson or the Apple TV and my TV all use cable connections just because it's a lower latency and it's a faster connection. Talking about connection speeds, uh, this is a speed test of my iPhone 7 connected to the home Wi-Fi. Um, I'll do this test twice just for comparison, but I generally get between 4 and 500 megabits per second. On the right hand side I've got my MacBook Pro connected to a switch in the utility cupboard 
Um, and again, I nearly always get above 800 megabits from my ISP. It's a consistent speed to the Synology NAS, whether that's an internal network, but I've been really impressed with Hyperoptic and the network in general. There's very, very low latency and transferring files is a really quick and painless exercise. That's the physical network covered. So the way that I've actually managed the SSIDs or the Wi-Fi names is I've set up several VLANs um, and I've got three SSIDs. Um, so the three main networks that I have on Wi-Fi are a secure main, it's called a corporate network, but it's really my home network. So iPhones, computers, they connect to that. Um, they've got access to the Synology NAS, which has got all of the storage. Um, but then I have two further networks. I've got an IoT network, which is completely locked down uh, so that if one of those devices was compromised, they wouldn't have access to anything else in the network. And then I have a second network or a third network, which is the guest network, which is for friends and family who come over. Um, it just means that they can't get into the Synology NAS, but it's an unrestricted access. I haven't used the UDM to put any speed restrictions in there, um, but I just like them being on a uh, separate VLAN. So I will potentially do a video on how I set all of that up, but that's the final piece in the jigsaw puzzle. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've liked the video. Please hit the like or and subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, please let me know. Um, feedback on how to set up things differently, or again, feedback if you want to shape what direction future videos I produce, um, whether you want me to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up the printer to scan to the Synology NAS, or whether it is a bigger video such as how to set up the Dream Machine, let me know and I'll try my best to get some more content out faster than I have been in the past. Um, so yeah, once again, hit the like, subscribe button if you've liked the video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.